never needed no one protecting me, that's for sure. I can hold my own, even on a planet savage as this one. But joining up with the Raiders was the best call I ever made. It's like family. When after Scooter died, I got family in short supply these days. Needless to say, level 10 was a doozy. Absolutely everything happens, and there's a lot to cover. But first, let's run over some bandits! Because that's the only way to get fuel! We're environmentally friendly. Having reenacted Carmageddon so we could fuel a spaceship, I remembered to check my mail. Turns out I had shot enough things with a couple manufacturer's guns to get some rewards. I started to realize how important it was to check my mail often, now that I knew how to actually do that, because it's just so easy to forget. Dad told us it was for our own good, that the rest of the universe was full of bandits that would tear us apart. And when we finally got free, it turned out he was right. I haven't gotten far enough in the story yet to explain exactly what the Calypso Twins are or why they are doing what they're doing, but by this point I was getting a certain sense that they were supposed to be connected to Handsome Jack, Hyperion, or the whole thing that was happening in previous Borderlands games. Or maybe I was just reading too much into it. I grabbed the Astronav chip and finally we had everything we needed. Yo, Ellie, got that Astronav chip. But oh no, it was not going to be that easy as the Calypso Twins show up and make Lilith's day much, much more difficult. As it turns out, Tyreen and Troy are sirens. Tyreen has the interesting ability that can suck the life force out of anything she touches, which is really bad when she has a siren as powerful as Lilith in her grasp. I almost feel like we were getting foreshadowing when Lilith asked us to just refer to her by her name and not Firehawk earlier in the story. I wonder if that was intentional. Also, how many sirens are we up to now? I thought there was a line in Borderlands 2 where Handsome Jack said that there were only like three sirens alive at any given time. At current count, I think this makes five. The Calypsos filmed another episode of their Edgelord web series and left Lilith to die at the hands of their followers. Cue the hero moment. I climbed along the catwalks, taking out as many bandits as I could with Iron Bear. Mostly because time was of the essence. Technically this mission was not on a time limit, but it did feel like a certain sense of urgency was required. And after taking out what is referred to as a butt-ton of the Children of the Vault, I got Lilith back on her Quiet, feet, sans her siren powers. I've got you. After that unfortunate delay, we were able to get onto our spaceship as planned and take off for the stars. After pressing F to pay respects to her siren powers, Lilith sent us on a tour of Sanctuary 3. However, things, as they often do, went horribly wrong. We lost gravitational controls. I felt the feeling of weightlessness for the first time ever. And then, just like Icarus, I fell to the ground. However, Claptrap had finally found his true purpose in life, by being glorified duct tape. It was time to search the ship and make sure everyone was okay. Of course, the first person I had to check on was Tannis, who is always in trouble. Her laboratory seemed to be frozen solid. So I punched a button real good to thaw it out. Fortunately, Tannis had watched Empire Strikes Back and pulled what we call in the industry, a Bantha Special. I freed some people who were trapped behind a door because Claptrap's an idiot. Claptrap, did you imprison our crew? And got my own room in the process. Finally, I could access my bank and unload the myriad of things that I absolutely needed. Yes, I could get rid of them at any time. I don't have a problem. I put out some fires for Marcus and helped him save his store. He was incredibly grateful. I appreciate the help, Voltanta, but don't expect a fire sale. However, this is what I was saving my money for. SDUs. Storage deck upgrades. Now I could finally carry even more stuff because I don't have a problem. Along the way I collected audio logs and discovered that Moe's had basically gotten catch 22 would Five more missions and your contract's up! Then you're free to go! You said that five missions ago. 
If you want to keep that Iron Bear unit, it's five more missions. Besides, I need you out there with the greenies. You quit, they die. Ugh, fine. One more mission. Where are we going? Darzaran Bay. F***ing motherfucker piece of f***ing f*** me! Randy Pitch, I, I mean Crazy Earl, refused to give me a MacGuffin I needed, leading me to go see my boo Moxie. Quit thirsting up our new vault hunter, Ma! We're in the crap! She asked me to play with her slot machines, and lo and behold, there's the iridium I needed. Upon returning to Crazy Earl, I was able to look at the vending machine outside his shop. Here I could use Iridium to buy weapons at my level that had anointed skills. Anointed gear have powerful abilities that can activate depending on what class you are. At this point I held off because I didn't have enough Iridium to get the things I really wanted, and the things I could afford weren't really grabbing me. I tried my hardest to have a disco dance party in Claptrap's room, but dancing options are sorely limited in this game. It's one of the major criticisms I can make. Basically, my dance moves pretty much involved hopping around and trying to do slides. Back on the bridge we got a preview of the Calypso Twins' newest viral sensation. Few people know they're currently working on Tony Hawk Underground 3. At long freaking last, we could finally set off for our new destination, Promethea. Promethea is the first planet outside of Pandora that we've visited in the Borderlands series. Yes, I do know that you went to Elpis in the pre-sequel, but that was a moon, not a planet. Don't at me. Fresh after I splashed down on Promethea, I started to encounter some enemies with shields, which blocks most direct damage. I hate them. Soon after this, I was introduced to Lorelai. I had to search my memory to figure out if she had been in a previous Borderlands game. I thought that since she seems to be mixed up with Reese, maybe Tales of the Borderland, but no, this is her first appearance in the series. She swore a lot at me, and then led me off to Reese. Well, I got no slagging clue about vaults, but Reese would know. Come on, I gotta tell him about our new bandit problem anyway. I'll introduce you. So it turns out that the children of the vault are now working with Malawan, and so they have sweet new elemental weapons, yippee. Also, I learned that Tyreen's management skills are sorely lacking. Okay, one more time and I'm gonna say it slowly. Don't kill the Malawan guys. Kill the Malawan guys! For you! For my queen! For my ah! No, 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 okay. Um, what are we going to do when we see a Malawan guy? Kill the Malawan guys! For Tyreen! For the twin gods! Yeah, okay, gotta start this one over. Lorelai booted up her sweet cyclone mono wheel, and I thought to myself, I want one of those too. Unfortunately, I cannot be cool yet. So I was stuck with my Outrunner. Stupid Outrunner. Will I get a Cyclone when I hit level 11? Better damn well hope so. Malawan pushed most of the Atlas forces back to HQ, but I've got a small team working behind enemy lines. I have to make sure they haven't been overrun with all these bandits running around. 